Hello. Welcome to this discussion with mayoral candidate Ann Watson for the city of Montpelier. Ann, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. This is great. So I'm Steve Pappas, editor of the Times Argus, and I'm here with Ann Watson, and we're going to talk about some of the issues facing the city of Montpelier. Um, you were running uncontested as yes. mayor. Yes. Um, so let's begin by having you talk a little bit about yourself and um, how you came to Montpelier. And then we want to know why you want to run for mayor. Well, all right. Yeah. So um, I'm from Vermont. I grew up in Essex. And uh, my family all still lives there. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I got a job here in Montpelier 13 years ago teaching at Montpelier High School. I have a degree in physics and a um, minor in math and a, my master's in education from UVM. So uh, I got a, a job at Montpelier right after that and uh, I've been teaching here ever since and I, I moved here uh, back in 2012. Mm -hmm. So it's been a, a little while and, um, oh no wait, I'm sorry, 2008 <laughs> is when I moved here and I started on the council uh, in 2012. Um, so it's, I've been on the, the council uh, for five, uh, oh gosh, six years now, I suppose. And uh, I've been the president of the council for the last three years, mm -hmm. uh, which means that I uh, end up doing the, the, the job of the mayor during council meetings uh, when he's otherwise unavailable. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's sort of the, the, you know, the broad view. Um, I mean, I, I got into working on the council because I uh, had been paying attention to the district heat project and then when a seat became open a, a colleague of mine called me and said hey would you consider putting your name in for the appointment and I I put my name in and I, I got that appointment um, so and I've, I've cared about energy for my the, that's a, a lens that I bring you know looking at how our policy decisions impact the environment is uh, is a, a huge priority for me so um, you know as I look at running for mayor now, well, I am, I am running for mayor, very likely to, to be elected. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, that is, that's one of the, the um, you know, driving forces for me as well, is to continue to uh, look at how, how we are um, relating to our environment in terms of net zero energy, looking at our relationship with the river um, and, and our stormwater systems. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, I mean, we flood almost every year. Mm -hmm. Um, th this is uh, something that I think we can and should address, and um, a lot of people who are maybe not next to the river experience uh, some issues with, with stormwater management, getting into basements and the like. So uh, we have a stormwater master plan, and I'm looking forward to digging into that and getting some of those projects checked off the list, uh, as well as, um, you know, one of the other, the other things that I'm uh, really interested in, I know a lot of people in Montpelier are interested in, are, is just looking out for the, the vulnerable people in our community, mm -hmm. um, whether that's uh, you know economically or, or just otherwise, you know people who are underserved, and uh, you know how are we how are we uh, doing in those in those realms, and what can we be doing to um, you know create uh, protections and make sure our systems are working well for them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you first came onto the council, it. It's nice that the colleague asked you, but you yes. actually have to want to govern. <laughs> yes. So there has to be something there that, that called you. Um, had you had inclinations in the past to want to serve in this capacity? Because it really is a challenging kind of experience because all of a sudden you're thrust into yeah. debates and you're thrust into having to be at the bottom of learning curves. And, yes. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So when I started, I... Uh, had been uh, on the energy committee as well as I, its lowly beginnings, but also the city's street lighting committee, and mm -hmm. just you know wanting to help give input in in an area that I felt like I you know, had something to contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you know that was sort of dipping my toe in, and then you know when the, when someone called me to to say, hey, how about you st uh, step up into this role? You know, I felt uh, ready to do that. And but to be fair, I mean, I did have a lot of learning to do. And uh, I mean, for the last five years, I feel like, uh, you know, that's, I mean, I, I'm, to be totally honest, I'm still learning. Like there's, there's more t uh, growth that I, I know I, I have to do um, about that. But I, I'm feeling really, at this point, I'm feeling really ready for this role, um, mm. especially, you know, just in talking uh, in front of, in front of cameras and in front, you know, with, uh, with uh, constituents, you know, people coming to council meetings, uh, 
that that is a really uh, it, at first especially it can be a really um, different kind of experience and I've found that I've, uh, I've I've loved it I've loved being able to contribute uh, to decisions that that we've made in the city and see right. projects happen to you know, getting things done oh my gosh that's so satisfying to right. see that like oh my gosh that project is happening or this policy is actually making people's lives better uh, it's 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 really it's it's a wonderful thing to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so under Mayor Holler, a lot actually has been accomplished yes. in the years that you've been on the council. Mm -hmm. He's been on longer than you've been on the council, but yes. but there have for the, the last five years that you've been on, there's been a lot of transition. How does your vision complement what's already been taking place? Sure. So there are a number of projects that are still underway, and I am excited to continue seeing those to completion. So one obvious one is the Taylor Street mm -hmm. Multimodal Transit Center that, uh, I mean, we're on track right now to uh, be uh, starting construction in May, uh, which is very exciting. I mean, this is a project that uh, has been going on for, for decades or, or more, right? So, uh, or at least 10 years, I should say. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the fact that we are this close at this point is just, it's really wonderful. It's very exciting. and. In addition, the bike path extension mm -hmm. uh, that's out past Granite Street uh, is likely to come together in the next couple of years where we have uh, an item on this uh, town meeting day's uh, ballot that will be a bond that will allow us to complete that work. Mm -hmm. So assuming that goes through, uh, gosh, you know, there's, we've got all the, all the property and all the easements that we need, so it's just a matter of getting out there and doing it. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I'm excited to, to see those happen. Uh, we're, you know, I, in part, I, I feel like I have really lucked out in that there have been these really wonderful, long-standing projects that uh, seem to be coming uh, together right as I'm about to step step forward. And I, I want to make sure that when it does finally happen, if I am the mayor at that point, that you know we we gather all the mayors who have been a part. Um, of this process so that that they get to be a part of it as well do you do you have a specific um, project that you would like to bring to the table as mayor so one of the things that I um, am really interested in is uh, is ac access to the rivers uh, so we have um, I mean we're, we're a city of, of many rivers and I think that the dialogue in town has really been uh, that that's something that we could be taking more advantage of. And that's also something that I think if we, uh, if we can get a few things in place, it, it has the potential to also be uh, an economic driver for us. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, if we have a, a space, I mean, we have a, a confluence of rivers with the North Branch meeting, uh, the Winooski. Uh, I mean, it, looking at Missoula as a, a model, uh, their confluence of rivers is, is a huge economic driver for them, and I, I think that that's a, a potential project that I would I would really like to look into. Hmm. Um, so that we're sort of at the beginning edge of that of that one, and I'm sure you know if even if all the lights are green for that, it will still take years. But that's okay, and um, let's start having that conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the city's had some interesting conversations on zoning, and you kind of now have your ducks in a row as far yes. as that concerned, and, and planning as well. Economic development still kind—it's of, still one of those things that the city still is kind of juggling. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're, you're limited by geographically. You can't really—you can't get any bigger. You've got limited space. You're limited space. Yeah. Um, but you definitely are looking to expand Grand List and make some adjustments. For sure. Um, what do you envision needs to happen in the city of Montpelier to improve economic development at this point? Sure. So I think of. Uh, a couple of different different things, um, you know. Thinking about uh, the economic development strategic plan that the city did not that long ago, we uh, one of the recommendations from that document uh, was more housing, and um, which is that that to me is is the, the pretty close to the top of the list, if not the top of the list. Mm -hmm. um, we absolutely need more more housing in general, and more uh, specifically affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm really excited that I I think our zoning um, is has opened up some uh, some space for, or I hope it will make it easier for uh, development projects to come to Montpelier and, and get done. So 
uh, we'll see how that works. And if it doesn't work, that's worth noting. Um, I mean, I, I want to be, uh, this is a little bit of an aside, but one of the other things that I'm really interested in doing is uh, intentionally collecting more data about the city and making that available to people on the website. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, if we were to you know, ask ourselves, like, well, how are we doing in terms of housing starts? I mean, that's something that I, I, could, I could ask city staff and they would tell me. Uh, but I think it would be really useful if that kind of data was, was available so that anyone in Montpelier could, uh, could access the website and get a, a picture of how, how the city's doing. What are the community indicators that uh, we want to use to measure our health? When one of them or probably several factors would have to do with economic development. And if we're not tracking that, then we don't know. Yeah. Um, and so I'm... So you're talking like a dashboard? I'm, I guess I'm talking like a dashboard. Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, that's sort of, that's almost step zero that we would need to do just in terms of um, uh, things to address economic development is, is keep track of uh, some factors. But the other, the other thing too, so uh, things that we would be uh, keeping track of, one would be housing um, and, and jobs. One of the other things from the uh, economic development strategic plan was, was a specific suggestion about uh, building a, a hotel. Mm -hmm. And right now we have that prospect uh, in downtown. And uh, I'm, I'm actually very excited about the, the possibility of having a, another hotel uh, downtown. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, one of the things I'm also very excited about, or uh, had been excited about, continue to be, I suppose, is uh, the, the net zero um, design competition mm -hmm. that happened. And which which really rethought the land use, especially downtown, right. uh, and I, you know, particularly with that as a as a really lovely um, vision of a, a, what Montpelier could look like. That that's also going to be economic development for us. I mean, if we're rethinking uh, where cars go, <laughs> you know, if we need a parking garage and how we can be using our parking lot space differently for more businesses, especially since we have a limited. Uh, amount of space in Montpelier, the more that we can be uh, densifying our, our downtown, I think that's that's going to be good for us. And and I, I know development can be really uh, hard uh, sometimes, you know, the prospect of, of uh, the landscape changing um, is tough. And, you know, I want to preserve uh, s uh, space that's sacred. You know, I, I'm thinking of uh, Saving Pasture, Pasture, you yeah. know, I mean, I, I think I think where we've landed with that is um, isn't a good place where we're we're going to get some development hopefully along Berry Street. I think people are into that, and then I'd I'd love to uh, see us preserve the the upper part. Um, so so yeah, we still have we do still have room for growth, and uh, you know I'm I'm looking forward to helping making that happen. Yeah, that so that section of of Berry Street, and then the area behind Granite Street too. Yes. I mean, that's yeah. very exciting that that's kind of on the books. Right, sure. Uh, the, like the Stonecutter's Way extension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what can happen back there. So constituents for years now have, have and, and Mayor Haller heard it, and members of the council have heard, Montpelier's affor affordability is an issue. Yeah. Um, how do you, when constituents come to you, what do you say to that? Uh I say absolutely, yeah. <laughs> right, and and you know usually people have some kind of story, you know, to go along with like you know either. But they bring it up because they're looking for some kind of relief too. Right, right, right. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so you know, um, one of the things that we did learn from the economic uh, development plan was that I mean this this is a, a part of our our um, where we fit in the economic structure of of central Vermont, right? Mm -hmm. That we are we are expensive, but we're high quality as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, while I do, I, I hear people, and that, this is one of the reasons why I want to see uh, how we can be growing our grand list uh, and come up with a, a long term vision for uh, where we want Montpelier's tax rate to to be. Uh, if if we were going to be funding all of the city services at the appropriate levels so that in the long run we didn't have to, we, we weren't underfunding something. You know, I'm, I'm thinking of the roads. I mean, we've spent the last uh, four or five years or so uh, adding increasing <laughs> amounts of money to our road and sidewalk infrastructure. And I, I think that's really important because if we're going to maintain those assets at an appropriate level, 
then we need our, our tax rate to honestly be higher. Well, I should say we need to be putting more money um, into those assets than we are right now. Mm -hmm. So divide that out by the grand list, um, and that's, that's your tax rate. So uh, we need to figure out what, I don't think we actually even really know right now what that steady state budget is for the whole city, uh, particularly because one of the other assets that we have not been funding appropriately has been our buildings. Um, uh, we we just recently got a facilities manager uh, at a you know quarter time position, which I'm I'm thrilled that that exists at all um, because bef you know prior to that uh, you know projects were sort of haphazard or they were left to department heads whose expertise is not HVAC, um, mm -hmm. so uh, that's that was problematic and. Um, Anyway, so you know, once we know, okay, so how much money should we be putting into all of our assets, to our, our water and sewer infrastructure, uh, you know, how many miles of, of piping do we need to be replacing every year? Um, then we can we can figure that out. But in the meanwhile, uh, you know, let's 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 get a hotel that's also going to bring in a substantial amount of uh, meals, rooms, and alcohol, uh, local options tax. I mean, mm -hmm. that's going to be a big chunk of change. Um, you know, let's let's build more housing. Let's uh, you know uh, figure out where to put cars so that we can free up parking lots uh, and 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 again build up our grand list. Is it time to renegotiate pilot money? So uh, that that's a tough one, just because uh, I mean, as far as the state goes, I mean, they have one of the most generous algorithms. Uh, of any state, so just for just for people uh, to to know how that works, uh, any state capital, um, or I, I should say, uh, the the state entity, ends up paying the the city that it is in some payment in lieu of taxes, mm -hmm. and uh, our our algorithm is um, is uh, is on the generous side relative to other states. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, you know, we're certainly grateful for that. One of the things that I am really interested in doing is having uh, more frequent and uh, collaborative conversations with the state. There's never any lack of things to talk about between the city and the state. Right. And, and I know John was able to do that uh, perhaps fluidly because, you know, his job uh, kept him at the state house often. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, but I would, I mean, I'm, I'm at the high school. I'm very close to the um, to the state house, but not actually there. So, you know, I could picture, uh, you know, having some kind of regular check-ins um, with BGS or uh, with VTrans or whoever the, you know, the right entities are. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to, you know, open that conversation, um, which I, I think just having open lines of communication is uh, just better for for everybody. Right. Um, so. So you've alluded to to some of the challenges, and and there there's. Parking is always a challenge in Montpelier. Yeah. I know just trying to park today, you know, yeah, you yeah. have to do the, the circling like a chicken hawk. <laughs> um, what, are, what are some of the other challenges that constituents bring to you on a regular basis? Uh, well, so it, it might seem um, like a like small, a smallish is issue, but when I'm out talking to people, I mean, they are, they, they often bring up uh, challenges of uh, of walking or feeling um, safe relative to cars, if uh, you know, on the road. Uh, but you know, there I think there's some other bigger issues that Montpelier is facing, and I mean, one of the big uh, issues is is the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, this is not unique to Montpelier, but it's something that I mean, it's it's in our community. It's uh, it is it is affecting people's lives, and and I'm you know interested in continuing to work with Chief Fakos uh, as to how we can be you know treating this really as a public health issue, and getting people the support and the services they need. Um, and I mean these are these are tough times; they're stressful times. And you know one of the things that I'm I'm sort of not a, I've left your question a little bit, but we can come back I'll to it. I'll bring you back. <laughs> we can, we can come, back, come back to it. Um, but you know, one of the things that I I really want to do as mayor is um, just just help you know remind people like it's it's all about relationships and building community and um, how uh, you know how we can live 
live well um, with each other, even even in stressful times. Mm. Um, but so yeah, coming back to your your question though about other things that um, that people raise, people do talk about the river um, for sure. Um, people talk about affordable housing. I'm trying to think of anything else. Nothing else is coming to mind right mm -hmm. now. But if something comes up later, I will. Okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll jump back in with that. So challenges for you though. What what do you see as as the kind of the biggest challenges facing the city right now? And I'm sure opioids is top of that list. Yes. Yeah. For sure. And right. Yeah. Thinking about how uh, we can effectively tackle that. Um, you know, one of the the tough things is that. Uh, we don't have, uh, we're not keeping a lot of data right now, or it's not, I, I guess I should say, uh, we do have some data. It's often uh, in the annual report. I think we could be doing a better job uh, of holding that up and telling the stories um, that, are, that are there. So one of the, one of the difficulties is that um, we don't have a great mirror for ourselves right now um, in terms of data. When we say, you know, how are, how are we doing? Well, you can, we can talk about anecdotes um, and how people are feeling, and that's fine, but uh, you know, I, want, I want to wrap that around some, some numbers. I mean, maybe this is the, like the science, science background that I come from. I, I just, you know. Hey, data speaks volumes, <laughs> it right? It does, right? right. So you know, that's, that seems, like I, again, that seems like step zero to me. Um, and, but you know, besides, besides that, I mean, we have a, a constant struggle of, uh, of, of finances um, and you know, making good choices with our money. I mean, this is really the role of the council uh, is to figure out how to best spend our, our money. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to think, thinking about ways to support uh, homeowners and, and uh, developing more housing. It, so uh, one of the things that I'm particularly interested in, and I, I haven't gotten a great solution to this yet, but one of the things that I've been thinking quite a bit about, you know, in terms of our, our net zero energy goal. Uh, uh, one of the things that I would love to figure out a, a solution for is um, thinking about the, the renting population in Montpelier. So mm. Montpelier, 40% uh, of our dwelling units are rentals, which is, I mean, that's... And you have a very low rental, uh, or, or very... Yeah, yeah. Very low rental we have rate. effectively a zero, zero. Um, vacancy rate. Yeah. So there's not, uh, you know, there's not necessarily. I mean, we have a lot of really great landlords here who I think you know do want to do the right thing and take care of their properties and make sure they're energy efficient and um, and even in addition, you know, maybe have some renewable sources. Uh, but that's that's just not the case for everyone. And you know, so thinking about how. Uh, disenfranchised renters are in terms of their energy profile mm. um, and that they may be uh, you know the most economically vulnerable people in our community and they may get stuck paying the highest prices for energy as uh, you know they're they're paying for propane often uh, in rental units and that's like the highest <laughs> the most expensive form of uh, uh, fossil fuels and um, or I suppose kerosene is a little more, but that's another story. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, just thinking about how we can uh, think about energy justice for people in the renting community. Mm -hmm. uh, because those, uh, so 30% of our uh, mortgaged homeowners and renters in Montpelier are paying more than 30% of their income towards housing. Mm -hmm. And energy costs are a part of that. So, you know, as, as times are tough, uh, you know, we want to make sure that uh, we can be helping to support uh, people's transition to either renewable energy or um, energy efficiency because uh, that's going to help save them more money even in the long run. Mm. Um, so that's one of the things that I, that I think a lot about. Um, but yeah, don't have a solution yet. Um, but also just in terms of other things facing the city, uh, I mean, we have a, a TIF proposal uh, that's coming down the pipe. Uh, and I, I'm really interested to to see uh, what works out for that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, if it were if it were up to me, I would, you know, make it as large as the district as large as possible. And right. Um, well, and they work very well in other communities. Yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. it has. Uh, so that's something that we're that's on the horizon that we're going to need to um, have conversations about soon. I mean, it may be. I, I'm trying to remember the timeline for TIF, and I, I it's I I don't think we're going to be 
pretty sure it will not be done by the time you know March rolls around. Mm -hmm. So it'll be the new council that has to to deal with that. Um, yeah, and also you know all, coming up on the on the horizon uh, is the the new city plan. Mm -hmm. uh, our old plan uh, we did readopt uh, with the intent that we would do a, a deeper dive uh, into that over the next year. So that's that's also going to be a part of our upcoming process. Um, but yeah, you know, just in terms of challenges, opioids, housing, uh, affordability along with housing. Um, and then, I mean, I do hear quite a bit about parking. Yeah. Um, and, and too, you know, I, I think, um, I, I'm, I'm thinking about our, our downtown businesses and um, that you know, they, they are interested in getting people off the highway, uh, stopping here, and you know, how do we uh, keep uh, people coming to visit. Um, so that's, that's something that I want to make sure that we, we address as well. I mean, gosh, the Women's March was yeah, huge. Tremendous. That was, tremendous. that was amazing. And it seems like the, the, the amount of, uh, protests and demonstrations we have is increasing, which, you know, is, um, you know, it's going to be a, a challenge for our, our police, uh, force because uh, we're, we're so grateful, you know, that, that, uh, uh, a lot of protests do go through the process of filling out paperwork, but that doesn't always necessarily happen. Um, so, anyway, those are those are a few things on the list. Anyway, I'm sure I could go on. <laughs> yeah, well, that's great. So we only have about a minute left. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, which also, you know, it's, it's great that you have so many things to talk about. Yes. So, um, what's one thing you love about Montpelier? Oh, gosh. Uh, I love the sense of community here. I love that... Um, people know each other, and uh, I think that comes from having a walkable community and mm -hmm. people who are very participatory in uh, in their community. Uh, we we really don't have a, well. There are a few committees we could use some people on, but uh, we often have lots of people applying for the the same position at the city council. I just think that that speaks so well of of our community that we want to be engaged, uh, yeah. and and yeah participating here yeah yeah well thank you very thank much you. for taking the time yeah for sure yeah and so this has been a conversation with ann watson who is running for mayor of the city of montpelier uncontested but you can still vote for her on march 6th <laughs> and sooner so we would encourage you to do so because democracy is a very important part if not the most important thing that we do as citizens so um Thank you to Worker Media for this opportunity to sit down with Anne, and thank you for taking the time. Yes, well, and thank you for inviting me.